What's up YouTube? Uh, today we're in the rug shop. I got a couple of rugs. We're going to look at two different uh, coincidences or I guess issues you may run into when cleaning rugs. I got a tufted wool rug we're going to look at and then a cotton backed uh, polypropylene rug. So let me show you the tags and I'll show you what we're going to do for these. Here we go. So this is our tufted wool rug. I've actually already cleaned the face of it and I got it hanging inside out so I can clean this backing. So this is a tufted rug, which means it has a woven mesh that they didn't, they didn't use a gun to fire the little wool staple fibers into it. And then they take that and glue on this woven backing and you can kind of see the the mesh kind of through the backing a little bit but these are notorious for coming apart when you get them wet it's a latex glue that they use and especially urine but even just immersion cleaning will separate that backing there's also sometimes issues with it off gassing even a brand new rug might smell horrible so I try to stay away from full immersion on these. And this one I was able to do topical clean on the top. And then I'm going to clean this backside uh, with the hand tool and get any spots and stains out. And here's the uh, tag for this 8x10 rug. Uh, and it, if you read, it says made in India. And that's the ones you generally need to watch. If they're made in India... Uh, it may have a, a cheaper or poor latex backing that tends to get that odor. Uh, this one doesn't smell now, so I think it'll be okay. And this one is not in bad shape. Usually this band will be coming up, uh, at least in a few spots. And I'll normally just glue it back down. Um, this one's in good shape, so we're going to keep it that way. Uh, they're not super expensive rugs. Uh, and they're not super uh, valuable rugs either but uh, the customer likes it it is a pretty rug we're going to get it finished cleaning it up for her and get it back to her the other one I want to show you tonight is this polypropylene monster this is a 10 foot 6 inch by about uh, 14 6 polypropylene rug now first thing when you hear polypropylene is synthetic doesn't absorb water super easy to clean but this one has a cotton woven backing. And actually most of them have some form of cotton, usually just in the edges. And the label may or may not specify that. This particular one does uh, specify that it is cotton backing with polyester and cotton warp yarn and polypropylene pile. So if you've ever cleaned one of these, you've probably gotten the scare that most cleaners have when the edges curl up as it's drying and it looks like teetotal dog shit and the customer gets mad at you because polypropylene is completely adsorbent. It does not absorb water at all. And cotton is very absorbent uh, and has a tendency to shrink. So what happens is the cotton gets wet and shrinks. The polypropylene does not. And that's how you get your edge curling. So this one has a pretty severe urine contamination and we're actually going to stretch it out on the on the uh, uh, stretching frame and treat it for urine contamination today. Uh, so with the stretching frame, you don't have to worry about any of the edges curling, and I can really soak it in urine con uh, treatment. And I'll probably leave it like that for today. I may get to cleaning it late tonight, but I like that stuff to sit as long as possible in the stretching frame so you won't get any curling. And then I'll take it out clean it and then put it back in the stretching frame nice and tight while it dries uh, so that I don't get any curl in here. So I'm going to get set up and get this thing in the frame and I'll show you how we do that and uh, go on to the next step. So here we go. 
All right, folks, you'll have to ignore the edges of my rug shop. I got stuff piled up everywhere to make room for this behemoth, but uh, I got the ends of the rug locked down in the stretching rig. And uh, my rig's kind of built for average size rugs, which this is not. So I've had to add in a extra support on each side. Normally, my clamps would be on the sides and I stretch to the middle, but that won't work on this one. So we're getting ready to spray it down with some good old Odorzyme treatment. And then I'll kick it tight and screw my supports down to hold it until it dries. So here we go. All right, YouTube, it's been a few days since we treated this uh, rug with the cotton backing. We've had it stretched out in the frame and now it's dry. As you can see, we don't have any edge curling, looks good. And now we're gonna wash it. I got blessed to have a nice sunny day here, February day, so nice sunny day is a blessing to keep it outside where I got a little more room. Use the sun to help dry it. So we're gonna wash it, extract it, put it back in the stretching frame, hopefully get it dry or almost completely dry before we move it inside. So, here we go. All right, after a nice cold water rinse, we're using a Pro's Choice Predator pre-spray actually, but it's mixed up in that dump bucket. This rug's not super dirty with the exception of the urine, and we've already taken care of that, so. Predator is a uh, moderate pH, like 9.8 pH, safe for stain resistance. And it smells good, it has an awesome smell to it, which is this customer's biggest concern. So, spread that out on there, we're gonna scrub it in good. And then we will rinse it good. And strike it dry and stretch it back out. So it's a little loud, but uh, after rinsing that predator out with some cold water rinse, Logan's extracting the excess water now. She's clean, so once he's finished going over it with the wand, we'll put it back in the stretching frame for the afternoon. Drop some fans on the other side of it to help out the sun and this nice little breeze we have. Hopefully we can get it almost dry, not all the way dry, and then we'll hang it up for tonight to let it finish. So, here we go. Alright, so now we got it rinsed out and extracted and put the stretching frame back on it. So it's clamped in on either end, kicked out tight with the braces screwed together to hold it out flat. So we can get it dry without any edge curl. So that's how you tack a cotton backed polyester or olefin rug that have the tendency to curl up, hold it flat, scratch it out so it'll dry nice and flat. Now we got a few others to wrap up uh, and then we will be done for today. So here we go. 
And for a little bit of closure, this is the face of that uh, tufted rug I showed you at the beginning of the video. Uh, we just pulled it down and give it a quick uh, post vacuum. Sorry, the lighting's so bad, about half in the shop. And, uh, you know, post vacuum it and roll it up, and it's ready to go home. Just to show you how we get a rug ready for delivery, I just finished pre vacuuming and I use these foam, uh, kind of like a pool noodle, like a commercial pool noodle. I place one of them just under halfway, and then flip. And then we flip the rug over that noodle, make sure it's nice and even. And then place this noodle on the inside of that roll so there's no sharp creases but we're rolling face to face on the rug without creasing it or any sharp folds and we'll roll it up like that and then every rug gets a sticker I always try to roll the label out And then every rug will get a sticker beside the label with the name and date and service that we did to it. So when we get repeats, we can see what we did last time. Well, get it rolled, and here we go. All right, so this tufted rug is now ready for delivery. I use that six inch saran wrap to wrap it so it has plenty of room to breathe. You don't want any moisture trapped in there. And if we were going to store the rug, we put it in a Tyvek wrap, but this one's going straight home to get delivered. So that one's a wrap. We got the polyester and cotton rug out here drying in the sun. We'll finish it up shortly. And so went tidying up some loose ends around the shop today. We'll call it a day. I'll check in when that other rug's ready to roll. Here we go.